The Dodge Daytona is a rare bird indeed. The model was made for just one year, 1969, and Dodge only stamped out 503 examples. If you were lucky enough to be around at the time, seeing even one of them would have left an indelible mark on your psyche. The ground-bound, aircraft-inspired missile was the highly visible result of what happens when engineers, racers, bean counters, and PR mavens join collectively in an all-out effort to dominate NASCAR super speedway competition, but the 1969 Dodge Daytona would also inspire a few in the drag racing camp, two of them being Big Willie Robinson and his wife, Tomiko Smith Robinson. Keep scrolling to learn more about Bill Willie, Tomiko, and the untold history of their Dodge Daytona. Who are Big Willie and Tomiko Robinson? Big Willie and Tomiko Robinson were the founders of the International Brotherhood of Street Racers in Los Angeles. The club was dedicated to the elimination of gang violence through a common interest in hot rods and became instrumental in tamping down the racial tensions and violence after the Watts riots of 1968. The Brotherhood of Street Racers sought to settle the score peacefully between rivals and groups through races that were sanctioned by the Los Angeles Police Department under the Run What Ya Brung motto. The tactic worked and the LA Police Department would note that gang violence subsided to almost zero whenever Brotherhood Raceway was operating. Big Willie and Tomiko Robinson's 1969 Dodge Daytona to be auctioned Mechum Auctions will be offering Big Willie and Tomiko Robinson's cream-colored 1969 Dodge Daytona as lot number F139, called the Duke and Duchess Car, at its Kissimmee, Florida auction, on Friday, January 13, 2023. The 1969 Dodge Daytona's history is well documented, with the car having been purchased from Big Willie and Tomiko Robinson by Kentucky car collector Gary French in 2000, then resold to denim designer Don Juan Harrell in 2006, who never restored it. Eventually, in 2010, Harrell sold the cream Daytona to Corey Owens of Ogilvy Collision in Ogilvy, Minnesota, who restored it to its current condition using the most accurate information available at that time. The misinformation around Big Willie Robinson ever since the passing of Tomiko Smith Robinson 2007 and Big Willie Robinson 2012, a lot of factual liberties have been taken about the iconoclastic couple and their famous machines, among them the claim that Big Willie was a decorated special forces veteran who served in Vietnam. Long since disproved by Los Angeles Times reporter Daniel Miller in a seven-part podcast series on Big Willie, Research and documentation from the Department of the Army shows that Big Willie never served with the U.S. Army or the Green Berets in Vietnam, but was discharged in 1967 during basic training due to a medical condition. It was a fiction disseminated by Big Willie to the public and even his closest confidants for the sole purpose of facilitating better relations with the police and local politicians, and it worked. Given the couple's vast contribution to race relations and public safety, Big Willie gets a mulligan for this one. Tomiko Robinson was a better racer than Big Willie It's generally assumed that Big Willie was the dominant racer of the two, but it was Tomiko Smith Robinson who is remembered by longtime associates of the International Brotherhood of Street Racers as being the better driver. In fact, of the races Big Willie was personally part of, it was arguably his loss to LA street racer Bo Pete in 1970 while driving his R4 Red, King, Daytona that became most infamous within the local street racing community. It was this highly visible loss that caused Big Willie to redouble his racing efforts, and which circuitously led to the loss of the famous Hemi-equipped R4 Red, King, 1969 Dodge Daytona. Big Willie's original 1969, King, Daytona was ruined by a racist sometime after Big Willie Robinson's R4 Red 1969 Dodge Daytona was filmed in August of 1970 for Universal Pictures' opening sequence of two-lane blacktop, shot on Stanford Avenue. A long alley between Central Avenue and Avalon Boulevard in Los Angeles Big Willie blew the car apart for a new round of modifications. The American racing wheel of the period above shows how Big Willie's R4 Red, King, Daytona looked around this time. Note the stock hood with no scoop. As part of Big Willie's upgrade regimen, after the King Daytona received its trademark bulbous elephant hood induction, he sent the car's body to a local shop specializing in acid dipping for weight reduction. Upon being informed that the work was complete and the invoice due, Big Willie wasn't able to immediately pay for it and pick it up, a situation every racer eventually faces. But in this case the shop owner took matters into his own hands in a racially driven act of retribution by deliberately overexposing the Daytona's body to acid until it became a corroded hulk. Big Willie, the pro he was, never let on how the car met its real demise, only confiding in a few close associates what had happened. In researching this story, Hot Rod has discovered that several parts from the King Daytona survive, including the VIN tag, build sheet, and dashboard. From these, a King Daytona clone is believed to be under construction by an individual in Illinois.
Beware, when this car surfaces, it will not be the original King Daytona, but may be described or sold as such. Tomiko's 1969 Dodge Daytona wrecked in Canada with Big Willie's Daytona out of the picture, Tomiko's F6 Green 1969 Dodge Daytona above, background became the main attraction. It subsequently received an even grander paint scheme, employing elements of the King Daytona's hood and induction. Like Big Willie's car, it too had a Keith Black prepared Hemi with a B and M clutch flight transmission. During a North American tour of 1973, that car was destroyed in a race held in Canada. A local farmer who was a fan offered to buy the wrecked Hulk, but not until Willie and Tomiko first stripped the drivetrain and some of its other parts. Although most pundits say both Tomiko and Big Willie's cars were destroyed, there remains the possibility that the bones of Tomiko's F6 Green 1969 Dodge Daytona are sitting in a Canadian field somewhere. Read on to learn more interesting facts about Tomiko's Daytona. Dodge didn't give this 1969 Dodge Daytona or any other Daytona to Big Willie one of the biggest myths surrounding the three 1969 Dodge Daytonas, which has gained steam this past year, is that Dodge donated one or more 1969 Dodge Daytonas to Big Willie and Tomiko. Dodge never gave a 1969 Dodge Daytona to Big Willie. This myth is perhaps fed by the fact that Dodge is offering a premium-priced special edition King Daytona, a model of Dodge SRT Charger Widebody Red Eye, in remembrance of Big Willie. The first Daytona acquired by the couple was in fact donated by Warren Fox Dodge of Upland, California, in a press conference after Big Willie achieved notoriety. Big Willie bought the second car, the Green Queen, Daytona driven by Tomiko, from Schenck Dodge in Whittier, California, in 1971, after it had been used in a Playboy shoot then put under contract for a brief time by comic and social satirist Mort Saul, before Saul reneged on the deal. The third car, also an R4 red car like the King, Daytona but later repainted cream, was purchased as a used vehicle by Willie's younger brother, Don Ray Robinson, known to Brotherhood members simply as Tiny. When new, this R4 red car, now the Cream Duke and Duchess car up for auction, was originally sold out of Cherry Hill Dodge in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and was a used car by the time it was bought by Big Willie's little brother. R4 Red 1969 Dodge Daytona is cream for a good reason in researching this story, we spoke with several close associates of Big Willie who remembered the cream-colored Dodge Daytona being auctioned at Meckham Kissimmee. To keep the R4 Red Daytona from being confused with Big Willie's original R4 Red Daytona that appeared in two-lane blacktop, and perhaps for more nefarious reasons it was quickly resprayed a cream color at some point during the early 1970s. It's pointed out by Big Willie's associates and hinted at in a story by Hemmings that Willie's younger brother, Tiny, was under financial stress at the time and the bank was attempting to repossess the car. It's speculated that the quick repaint was performed to keep the repo crew from identifying the car, its oversprayed engine compartment and rear quarter trim pieces lending credence to the haste with which the cream paint job was executed. This doesn't explain the weathered lettering on the side of the car that appeared later on, but our story isn't done yet. This 1969 Dodge Daytona was never a tow car Another myth that needs exploding is that this third Big Willie and Tomiko 1969 Dodge Daytona was used as a tow vehicle for one of the other Daytonas. This is not true, as there has never been a trailer hitch mounted to the cream Dodge Daytona being auctioned at Meckham, so it could not have been a tow car. That was not the case, however, for Tomiko's F6 Green Dodge Daytona, the Queen Daytona, which did serve tow duty at one point for Big Willie's R4 Red Daytona. This confusion is likely the cause for such inaccurate citations. 1969 Dodge Daytona was supposed to be a lowrider. One cool fact that surfaced from our interviews with Big Willie's longtime associates at the Brotherhood of Street Racers is that Willie envisioned a place at Brotherhood Raceway for all forms of hot rodding, and that also included lowriders. Lowriders were a huge draw at Brotherhood events and Big Willie desired to have a Dodge Daytona built as a lowrider, and the winged car received preparation for this role. Moreover, modifications to the chassis and damage to the pinion snubber and floor area above it erroneously attributed to drag racing are actually evidence of the car's use as a lowrider. 1. Brotherhood Chapter VP We interviewed recalls Big Willie saying the Duke and Duchess Daytona had hydraulics installed only in the rear, but not the front as the Daytona's torsion bar front suspension, according to Big Willie, could not accommodate the modification. Those interviewed for our story say that this cream Daytona was stored in Big Willie's backyard on Kelso Street in Inglewood next to his swimming pool, where in addition to its club lettering it wore a set of rusted gold 13-inch Dayton wire wheels and a narrow steering wheel in the lowrider style of the time. 
This 1969 Dodge Daytona never had a Keith Black Hemi in it. One myth about this 1969 Dodge Daytona that we hate to explode is that it had a Keith Black aluminum Hemi in it at one time. It is true that Keith Black was a close friend of Big Willie and that he built most of Willie's engines until the engine builder became ill, but no Hemi was ever placed between the fenders of this Dodge Daytona. Confusion may have arisen because Keith Black did prepare the 440 wedge big block that was used in the Daytona contemporaneously through the early 1970s. Big Willie had a Keith Black Hemi and Clutch Flight Trans built for this Daytona A Hemi never made it between the fenders of this 1969 Dodge Daytona, but that doesn't mean one wasn't built for the car. Big Willie had Keith Black build an aluminum Hemi for the car, and even acquired another B&M Clutch Flight transmission to pair it with. Associates of Big Willie who visited his home over the decades recall the two pieces of gear patiently awaiting a marriage with the cream Daytona. They note that when the Hemi's fasteners began to rust from their exposure to the elements in Big Willie's backyard, Big Willie asked fellow Brotherhood member and top fuel engine builder George Doty to rebuild the engine, which he dutifully did. Prior to the rebuild, Big Willie offered the aluminum Keith Black Street Hemi with the B&M Clutch Flight Trans to then-owner Don Juan Harrell sometime around 2009 for a paltry $7,500, but Harrell blew off the offer, never getting back to Big Willie. After this, the Keith Black Hemi's new owner re-offered it for sale, this time to the car's restorer, Corey Owens, at an undisclosed but much higher price, which was too steep to be practical. The teardrop hood scoop was originally on Tomiko's Queen Daytona The fiberglass teardrop hood scoop on the Duke and Duchess Daytona should be familiar to hot rodders because it's the one found on the 1964 Ford Fairlane Thunderbolt, a limited production factory experimental drag racer of which 100 were built to secure the NHRA Super Stock Championship in 1964. As rare as 1969 Dodge Daytonas are, real Thunderbolt hood scoops are five times rarer, and the scoop grafted all those years ago to the hood now on the Duke and Duchess Daytona is central to the car's peculiarity. The original hood, which wasn't used for the restoration, showed evidence of having been previously used on Tomiko's Queen Daytona. Prior to this car's restoration, the wear pattern of the paint at the front edge of the original hood reveals the hood's intermediate F6 green paint scheme from its stint on the Queen Daytona, over an original coat of R4 red paint. Contemporary photos of Tomiko's car also show the F6 green car with a Thunderbolt teardrop hood scoop. 1969 Dodge Daytona was never campaigned, the final claim that we're busting here is that the Duke and Duchess 1969 Dodge Daytona was formally campaigned at all. Despite reputable media outlets claiming eyewitness accounts of the car being raced in the 1974-1978 period, no proof was ever offered, and none of the elder statesmen of the Brotherhood of Street Racers we spoke to remember this car being raced at any time. Our interviews with Big Willie's associates proved to us that it was Big Willie and Tomiko's ultimate desire to showcase the Daytona as a lowrider, not a drag racer. The funky twist is that Big Willie wanted to do it with a Keith Black Hemi and a B&M clutch flight. They made some progress to that end, witnessed by telltale modifications now erased but it was never realized. Prior to all of that, it was a second-hand car being used as daily transportation by Big Willie's brother Tiny, before being handed over to Big Willie and Tomiko and eventually ending up in the backyard on Kelso Street in Inglewood, California, away from prying eyes. It was covered there by a tarp and stored undisturbed for over two decades before it was sold by Big Willie to Gary French in 2000 and not in 2002 or 2003 as some have reported. Big Willie and Tomiko Robinsons, Duke and Duchess, 1969 Dodge Daytona 440C Big Block Wedge, 727 Torque Flight 3 Speed Automatic Trans, Cream Color, Black Interior known as the Duke and Duchess Daytona One of three 1969 Daytonas owned by Big Willie and Tomiko Robinson of the Brotherhood of Street Racers, believed to be the only one left in existence Concours Rotisserie Restoration by Corey Owens at Ogilvy Collision Ogilvy, Minnesota Magnum 440 CV8 Engine Upgraded Camshaft Torque Flight Automatic Transmission Cream Exterior Day 2 Look with Engine Bay in R4 Red and Body Overspray in Cream Hand Painted Lettering Black Interior Bucket Seats and Console Fiberglass Teardrop Hood.